Hello, welcome everybody. This is our update video for the month of, what's this month, May? April. I haven't done one of these in a while. Not since um, December, I think? It's been a few months since I've done a little update video. And then mainly that, that's just because I've been busy. If you haven't watched one of these videos before, basically all that it is is that I just update you on what I've been watching over the last month and talk about some movies that I didn't get to talk about in videos or didn't want to talk about and just want to give a little brief synopsis or my brief thoughts on these movies. So I saw quite a few movies in the month of April, some great, some terrible, of course, so let's just go through those. At the beginning of the month, I decided to rewatch the original Spider-Man movies. Um, I watched Spider-Man 3. I protected you in high school, now I'm gonna kick your little ass. <sighs> And I actually like Spider-Man 3 a decent amount. I, I actually like Spider-Man 3 more than I like Spider-Man Homecoming and more than I like Amazing Spider-Man 1 or 2. Spider-Man 3, while it's not the best of the Raimi trilogy, it's the worst, but it is the best of the recent Spider-Man movies. Um, I mean, you can say all you want about emo McGuire and his little like hip thrusts and the pointing crap, but uh, Spider-Man 3 has legitimately interesting, well-fleshed-out and developed villains with an interesting conflict at the heart of it. It has um, a villain, or all three villains, have um, significant motivation for their turns. And Peter Parker has an interesting turn as well as the bad guy. He becomes the bad guy and before the whole emo phase. It's actually interesting to watch him sort of fall into himself. And it makes for a compelling watch. And for the most part, the movie really works. The cinematography is really excellent from Sam Raimi. The visual effects are still pretty decent. There's some that look pretty bad, but a lot of them are, are really cutting edge and still look pretty good today. And a lot of the fight choreography is just excellent. What does it matter to you anyway? Uh... Everything! Um, every fight sequence, every action sequence in this movie feels like it has a lot at stake. It feels like there are actual consequences to things. Characters and their motives are brought into fights to make them more vicious or not. And it's, it's just an interesting movie for the most part. I, again, it's not amazing. It's not better than two or even the first one, but it works. And it definitely doesn't deserve to be called the worst superhero movie ever or the worst Spider-Man movie ever because it's, it's Far, 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 far from that. It's actually really great. It's a lot better than most movies that are coming out today, specifically superhero movies. So, I, you know, I'd say check that one out. Next, I saw A Quiet Place and The Layover, which I talked about. They're not great. Uh, next, I saw Isle of Dogs. You heard the rumor, right, about Doggy Chop? That's Remind us again? Brand. What rumor? Yeah, they folded. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. Donkey? Doggy Chop folded? So Wes Anderson's Isle of Dogs, this is one that I didn't get to talk about uh, when I finally watched it. It was so long from its um, release date that I was like, whatever, I don't care to talk about it. And I didn't really love this movie. I thought um, technically it's like a masterpiece. The animation is incredible. The cinematography is really nice. The style of the movie is really cool. I love the look of everything. I love the uh, soundtrack that this movie has from Alexander Desplat or whatever his name is. And I do enjoy some of the story, but for the most part, it is a bit of a mess. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of characters in this movie. And for the most part, they kind of just get lost in the shuffle. There's only a few characters that really matter in the story. And since there are so many other characters, they also kind of get lost in the shuffle. And Wes Anderson does this weird thing where he doesn't like subtitle a lot of the main Japanese actors, like the kid, for example, I'm forgetting his name, almost is never translated. So you never know what he's saying and you never know what he wants or is trying to do. And it makes his character so incredibly flat and boring that it's it's hard to care about him it's hard to care about his struggle it's hard to care about what he's trying to do and in turn it makes all of his scenes kind of boring 
And then even the, the uh, political side of this movie where um, they're trying to overthrow this kind of corrupted government, that's kind of just not interesting and it doesn't really work for me. The way it ends is so ham-fisted and uh, it just kind of quickly wraps things up and then it's just over. It just, I don't know, it just doesn't work for me. It's one that I think the characters are so boring in that it's just, it just doesn't work. To the north, a long rickety causeway over a noxious sludge marsh leading to a radioactive landfill polluted by toxic chemical garbage. That's our destination. Great. Got it. Get ready to jump. Next I saw Truth or Dare, which I won't talk about because I completely forgot everything about it. It's so embarrassing and boring and bad, but it's so completely forgettable. I just don't know what to say about it because I don't remember it at all. It's just terrible. Uh, next, I rewatched, um, not rewatched, I watched Barry Lyndon. Stanley Kubrick's Barry Lyndon, and it's one of those few movies where um, I come out of it completely perplexed by it, even though I know that I love it. Barry Lyndon is one of the best movies ever made, but it's also an, a fascinating movie because it actively keeps the audience at arm's length. It's so cold and so calculated and methodical that it, it never lets you like get involved with it. It's the strangest feeling. The main it's a character study, but the main character is like a robot where he just doesn't connect with people in the same way that normal people do. And so his emotions are strange. And in turn, the movie kind of takes on that same, same feeling that he has, where everything's just like a little bit off. And it's just so interesting to watch. It's so weird. I, I watch it and I'm thinking, man, it's beautifully shot. The production design is immaculate. The costume design is incredible. The direction's incredible. The performances are incredible. And the character and the character writing is incredible. But it's like, it so actively keeps you from getting invested or emotionally involved in it that it, it creates this insane feel that I've never felt in a movie before. It's definitely a strange one but it's one that I would highly recommend. Barry Lyndon, a film by Stanley Kubrick based on the novel by William Makepeace Thackeray, starring Ryan O'Neill and Marissa Berenson. But that will do it for me in this update video, a fairly short update video. I didn't honestly get around to watching too much because there's a bunch of just diarrhea in the theaters right now that's just not worth watching. And I was really busy doing other things, working on other projects. I didn't really have time to watch a ton this month, but these are the movies that I saw this month, and almost all of them I would recommend, aside from a few that I mentioned, like A Quiet Place or Truth or Dare and stuff like that, but most of them were pretty good this month. I was pleasantly surprised that I watched some pretty good stuff this month. So, yeah. See ya.